These splicing videos are intended to show the techniques involved in splicing Samson high-performance ropes. Some repetitive sequences have been edited for time. Watch the video to become familiar with the individual steps of the splice. When performing the splice, follow Samson's written instructions for the step-by-step -step procedure. Written instructions at samsonrope.com This splice procedure has been developed and tested for use with Samson Class II products only. Class II ropes are produced with high modulus fibers, HMPE, Aramid, LCP, or PBO. These fibers are often referred to by their trade names, Dyneema, Technora, Vectron, and Xylon. Instructions for this splice can be downloaded as an Acrobat PDF file from samsonrope.com and are also available in print form in the Samson Splicing Manual. The eye splice is used to form a permanent eye or loop in the end of the rope for attachment to a fixed point like a cleat or mooring bollard. An eye is also used to form the rope around a thimble to protect the rope when attaching to a shackle, chain, or wire rope. Eye-to-eye -eye splices can also be used to join two ropes. This splice is designed as a short splice for HMPE Dyneema Fiber 12-strand ropes only. The tuck berry splice is used when the standard direct berry splice is too long for the application such as when fabricating slings that must conform to a finished size that doesn't allow the standard direct berry splice to be used. Begin the splice by measuring and marking the rope. The measurements can be made using the fid length and a tape measure using the fid length for the size of rope being spliced. A fid length is equal to 21 times the rope diameter. Tape the end of the rope and measure one and a half fid lengths. This is mark one. Form a loop the desired eye size and make Mark 2 adjacent to Mark 1. For Mark 2, measure 2 fid lengths and make Mark 3. Put a tight tape wrap at Mark 1. At Mark 1, mark six strands around the circumference of the rope as shown in the illustration. These strands will be pulled completely out of the braid. There will be three Z strands, those with the twists going counterclockwise, and three S strands with the twists going in a clockwise direction. At the end of the rope, remove the tape. As each strand is pulled out, tape the end tightly. Hold the strands securely when pulling to keep the ends from fraying before they are taped. Smooth the remaining braided strands. Now, arrange the tail and the pulled strands as shown, with three strands on each side of the tail. It is important to have two S and one Z on one side, and two Z and one S on the other side. Mark the entry point at Mark 2. The entry point should be on one side of the rope facing the opposite leg of the eye.
From the entry point, count two picks and mark the exit points for the strands. Mark six strands around the rope. Now, starting with the three strands closest to you, route each strand through the entry point and out one of the marked exit points on the other side of the rope. Do not pull the strands up tight yet. When properly routed, the strands should have an X formed by one S strand and one Z strand between them. The tail is now buried from the entry point to Mark 3. On smaller ropes, a tubular fid can be attached to the end of the tail. On larger ropes, it is easier to attach a lead line, a length of twine attached to the fid to pull the tail through, as shown here. The length of the line should be about twice the distance from the entry point to Mark 3. Insert the FID at the entry point and pass it through the rope to exit at Mark 3. The lead line should still be visible at the entry point. Attach the end of the tail to the lead line securely. Now, pulling the lead line tight and milking the rope from Mark 3 towards the entry point should slack the braid enough to move the tail to Mark 3. It is helpful to attach the fit end of the lead line to a cleat or sturdy point. Continue to pull the tail through the rope until it exits at Mark 3. Leave the tail out at Mark 3 and snug the three routed strands. The three remaining strands are now routed from the entry point to the three remaining exit points.
With all six strands routed and the tail buried, snug up all the strands and pull on the tail to bring marks 1 and 2 adjacent to each other. At the tail, mark three consecutive strands from the end of the tail. Pull them out and cut them off. Make certain marks 1 and 2 are still at the same point. Smooth the rope from the entry point to mark 3 to bury the tail. Continue to smooth the rope until all slack is removed from the eye over the buried tail. Samson has validated a new method for finishing the splice and recommends tucking the tails as part of the splicing procedure. The following section shows the original tucking and grouping of the strands, followed by the new tucking procedure to finish the splice. The strands are now tucked into the braid of the rope. One complete tuck consists of passing a strand over one strand and under two strands. The tucks proceed down the same row of picks straight down the body of the rope. Do three complete tucks for all six strands. Each strand is always tucked under the same line of the braid so that the tucks progress straight down the body of the rope. After completing the first three tucks, remove half of the volume of the twisted yarns. Cut yarns from each of the six strands near the taped ends and complete three more tucks with the reduced volume strands. Group tail strand pairs with closest exiting point into six separate groups.
tuck previously grouped tail under two picks. Press tail through to the other side, passing through the center of the rope. Flip the rope over and pass tail under three picks. Exit and pull snug. Cut the excess strands flush with the rope. Be careful not to cut the body of the main rope. Follow step 6 until all 6 tails are tucked and cut. Your finished Tuckberry eye splice will look like this.